guys welcome back to another net video it's your girl Lera the period or make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up comment in the comment section don't forget to turn on your post notifications and hit the subscribe button this here like these days guys Ugh, my hair is so stubborn just stay yeah but without further ado and actually for today's video we're gonna be reacting to this whole situation between Russia and Ukraine. <clears throat> Russia and Ukraine. I was gonna say Ukraine, but yeah, it's the title says "War in Ukraine." What's happening in in Kiev? I think that's like a, a city in Ukraine. But without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. Russia has invaded Ukraine. I hope you guys can hear. Vladimir Putin has declared a special military operation, saying he aims to denazify Ukraine and protect Russia. And he has all but threatened nuclear fighting? escalation against the West if it tries to interfere. The Economist correspondent Richard Ensor is in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Overnight, everything's changed. You know, we went to bed. Ukraine was a was a country with a with one kind of future, and we've woken up to a completely different reality. It really is a new beginning um, for Ukraine, for Europe, and for the world. <laughs> is this like World War Three now? People have been hearing that in two days' time, in two weeks' time, in the coming days, Russia will invade. And like a boy who cries wolf, these reports of sometimes in instilled in Ukrainians a bit of hardened skepticism. So when there were, were reports last night that yet again a Russian invasion may be imminent, some people took them completely seriously and stayed up all night checking the news, preparing their bags. And other people went straight to bed and got a really big shock when they woke up. I woke up early this morning and I heard immediately through my window these very loud sirens, which suggest that in Kiev, in the capital of Ukraine, there was about to be an air raid. So, of course, I grabbed my bag and I run down to the street. And you could see that on the streets, the mood was an immediate shift from what it had been the day before. People were very grim. We heard a police car coming by and they told us that we needed to run to the nearest metro station. And we didn't know if this was an impending missile no. raid or just general advice. It was very hard to know. So, of course, we grabbed our bag and we started this to run. Like some, and underneath the metro, you saw families huddling, people not knowing what was going on, checking their phones. Babies in prams, people with suitcases and plastic bags full of belongings, sitting around waiting to know what to do. And incredibly, at the same time, you saw people going past, getting on the metro, going to work like it's an, like it's a completely normal day. It, yeah, I've never seen anything like it before. But you also had people starting to stock up on supplies, probably to stay in Kiev for a very long time in case things become a bit more chaotic. People filling up their tanks no. of gas so that they can leave. People buying medication from pharmacies. Like, and this is a city that is suddenly I, I, on a war footing. People are either running away to leave. I can tell you that I saw the road out west leaving the city towards Lviv and the Polish border. And from the very crack of dawn that that is being backed up for hours and kilometers and it's going to be very hard for people to leave in that way. Airspace is being closed. It's, um, for people who want to leave, it's very tough. But of course, a lot of people want to stay because they love Ukraine as their home and they think it's worth fighting for. A lot of people are going to be picking up guns. The president has said that anyone who wants a gun to defend their country can get one. In Kiev, a, a sense of order <laughs> prevails right now. There are, there are no vigilantes on the streets. There are um, service members, people from the National Guard on the streets. A lot of them are checking into military bases today to get ready for deployment. Ukraine is prepared for war because Ukraine for eight years has been at war. It has felt to Ukrainians like they've been fighting a war for eight years. Are they prepared for the kind of war that's about to break out on a different scale against a different kind of enemy with different kinds of motives? That's a tremendous question and we're going to see whether they are in the days that unfold. But it's certainly like the, the morale and the, the, the sense of really there being something to fight for is pervasive and very strongly felt among ordinary Ukrainians right now. The Western response is still so, unfolding. Like um, this is going eyes. to be something that takes several hours and, and days and weeks. Um, we're probably 
probably expecting a very large package of sanctions to be announced from the West. Ukrainians want to feel like they don't have to fight this battle alone. And they want to see a very strong response uh, from the, the, the European America Union, from the United States, from the rest of the West, in terms of sanctions against this Russian regime that was already a horrible place but is now exporting chaos well beyond its borders and towards Europe. Um, they want to receive additional help in terms of military aid. They would love that to keep flowing. And they want to feel like they live in a world where these kinds of acts perpetrated against them are not committed with, a, with impunity. They want, that of, they want to feel like there is a sense of justice in the world and that Vladimir wow. Putin and his regime is going to get Putin, what's coming to it. What do you the want? sad truth of this is if you look at where the Russian military is right now, if you look at where the Russian military is going and you look at Ukrainian citizens and where, where they live and who they live next to, all of that adds up to a massive refugee crisis in mm. Poland, in the rest of the EU, for the wider world. Uh, you are already seeing people trying to get to the borders of Moldova, Poland, trying to get through. It's not entirely clear how those countries are going to manage with that initial influx once, they, once it really gets going, whether they keep the, uh, those this door to safety open or whether they slam it shut. Um, that debate is coming to Europe right now. Ukraine is a country that considers itself European. They have Europe, they have EU visa-free travel. They can hop on a plane and take a coffee in any European city they like to under normal circumstances. But these are not normal circumstances and the question of how to manage that is going to be one of the, the dominant Surely. topics of discussion in the weeks to come. For those out there asking how this is going to end, it's a great question because all of the answers are so unthinkable that you don't want to speak them into mm. existence. We're, we're talking about a massive refugee crisis, thousands upon thousands of, of, of dead civilians and soldiers, cities being rendered unrecognizable uh, in, in a matter of days and weeks. If this war is not called off somehow and if the, the Russian plans for regime change in Kiev come to pass with such a strong military force and such superior air power for that for that kind of war. I mean, how that ends <sighs> and with the Ukrainian willingness to fight, it adds up to a long, bloody, protracted battle with a, a death toll that Europe thought it would never need to see again. If you'd like to know more about the unfolding war in Ukraine, please click on the link. It will take you to our hub with all the latest news, developments, information, and analysis. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Wow. Like, Russia, what do you want? What's your motive? Like, like imagine, like, it happened in South Africa, bruh. Like, you have to leave your home, a home you've taken so long to build like from decorating it everything and then your home gets bombed and then like people are literally going to be homeless people are going to starve like russia what is russia's motive like even this economist he's like he doesn't understand what their motive is and they don't even want to think of how this war is going to end because most wars just end badly or depressing so this is going to be in history textbooks 10 years from now i can already see it i honestly don't even i don't even know what to say i'm trying to put myself in this position imagine you were told if it's like lockdown but lockdown was better but it's like the world is what is going on i keep i keep on it's like this is like some zombie apocalypse type vibe like this is zombie apocalypse. Everybody leave your homes. Evacuate this area because that's where most of them are. I I'm at a loss of words because it's like, like why would you do this to people's homes? Imagine one day you went to sleep, you texted your friend, oh my god, I can't wait for tomorrow's party, and out of nowhere in the morning you wake up, boom. And this is not me even making fun of the situation. This is me trying to put reality and light to the situation. Because it's like, it's happening. I mean, I'm sleeping here while somebody is in some refugee, cold, hungry, distressed, wondering what is going to happen to my country. Like, I mean, they're ruining Ukraine's 
infrastructure, they're ruining Ukraine's economy. I mean, imagine COVID held back so many countries' economies. Imagine blowing up a whole country, certain cities in a country. How much is it going to cost to fix that? Imagine looting and repairing what people looted costed a lot. Imagine a bomb. I honestly don't know and I just put my prayers in Ukraine because yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna watch a second video on this and without further ado, make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up, comment your thoughts on this whole war situation because everybody's saying it's World War Three, and don't forget to turn your post notifications and subscribe. It's a girl and I'm out.